Hi, welcome to Infinite Wins 2.0. Just like with the monumental brass update, I thought it would be a good idea to redo the walkthrough and include all up-to-date information in a single place, especially considering how massive the sound changes are. Now, in short, 2.0 is a complete do-over of Infinite World Wins, and yes, it's a free update for all owners of your library. Now for a long story. Infinite Woodwinds is a collection of next-generation virtual woodwind instruments for native instruments contact. Unparalleled expression, multiple mic positions and spaces, 50 plus total positions for flexible instrument positioning and section sizes of any kind are all features you'll find here as well. RAM footprint remains small and patches themselves are pretty light, so loading up the entire library increases the project size by merely 4 megabytes, which means fast loading speeds and no unnecessary space clutter when saving drafts in your full template, etc. If you're familiar with Infinite Brass, Infinite Woodwinds plays just like it and controls are all the same. The only differences are the fact that all positions are accessible to all instruments in the library, meaning you'll have to be a bit more careful when changing the placement of your instruments so as to avoid having multiple instruments in the same spot if they're meant to be playing at the same time. So that, then there's the key noise volume control and obviously the lack of mutes. Now, Infinite Woodwinds originally had three rows of positions. Third row was a bit further back behind the initial middle trumpet row, and since the old IRs were done before percussion was planned, it had to be scrapped with the arrival of new spaces. The studio IRs especially were a bit of a stretch, but now there's just no room. The interface is very similar to the one you'll find in Infinite Brass. You can right-click any control to change the controller and do further adjustments like controller ranges in the MIDI automation tab. Like with Infinite Brass, there are three main parameters which you'll use all the time to shape your music, and these are dynamics, note velocity, and note duration. Dynamics set the overall loudness of the instrument. Infinite Woodwind's instruments, just like Infinite Brass, are also phase aligned, which means that there are no perceivable crossfades, and the dynamic response is smooth throughout. Note velocity determines the loudness of the attack. The loudness increases or decreases to match your current dynamics value, in other words, your CC1 slider. So if note velocity is above your current dynamics value, you'll get a strong attack. And if it's below, you'll get a soft attack. The attack time knob lets you adjust the duration of the attack. When set to max, attack time switches to velocity mode, and now velocity will exponentially determine attack time. So really slow attacks on soft velocities, but rather fast attacks at average velocities, and faster still on higher velocities, but that's where it matters a little anyway, as you're already using the mod wheel. The attack range control adjusts the range of soft and hard attacks. This knob sets a value between 1 and 127, which limits the amount that soft and hard attacks can deviate for away from your current dynamics value. So if the range is at 50 and the dynamics at 127, playing a velocity 90 note will start the attack at loudness value 90. For example, like this. But playing a velocity 40 note or any velocity below 77, this will always start the attack at the loudness value of that minimum. Same goes for hard attacks, only in the opposite direction. So if you were to turn this attack range knob all the way down to zero, your attacks would always start at your current dynamics value, which is how some other performance libraries out there work, and if this is what you're comfortable with, it's just a knob turn away. So of course, in this case, you have to play in these attacks yourself. But now I hope you're beginning to see how you can change and shape your playstyle using just these two knobs along with the combination of hard attacks on low dynamics and uh, soft attacks on high dynamics. Okay, uh, let's go to the third important parameter, which is note duration. And here we have the interplay of note duration and dynamics. Um, note duration is very important for playing shorts and repetitions. 
as these millisecond differences do matter. So the best, I, I wouldn't say the best, but the quickest way to do it is to just record your performance, slow down the tempo if necessary, but that way you'll get humanized timings, humanized note velocity, humanized note duration all at once. You don't have to be a great piano player, I'm not a virtuoso myself, you just need one hand for the keys and the other one for the controller. If you choose to sequence infinite woodwinds instead, make sure to have different note timings and note lengths for best results. Please do not just click in perfectly quantized notes into the grid, humans don't really ever play with millisecond accurate timings or note lengths. Okay, legato. If you play an overlapping note, you'll get a legato transition. So just like with infinite brass, lower velocities equal slower transitions. Now clarinets can also play glides. In the previous version these big interval glides didn't sound all that incredible since infinite woodwinds is still sample based, so you would get all the glory and artifacts as you normally get when changing the pitch of a sample to an extreme. In Infinite Woodwinds 2.0, the glides for any interval are executed in a series of transitions between semitones instead, so it's perfectly accurate to a microsecond, and given how Infinite Woodwinds is chromatically sampled, the glides now sound perfect from the get-go for any interval. No more manual interval stitching necessary, no more velocity matching stuff like that. The glides are triggered at velocities 40 and below, and given how they're not that often used, you'll find that all clarinets load with the legato minimum set to 41, so as to avoid accidentally triggering them. If, if and when you find yourself in a need to play glides, simply lower this value to zero or whatever minimum you prefer. This was a requested feature and has been first implemented in Infinite Brass 1.4 and it works the same for all instruments. If you naturally play softer when playing quietly, raising this minimum can help you avoid triggering slower legato transitions. If you play and hold a note, then play an overlapping note and release it, you'll get a legato transition back to your first note. This is the main mechanic for playing trills. Just like an in infinite brass, you can do legato transitions while playing soft and hard attacks. This is great for playing, for example, sforzando trills. So you can play your own trills and play them as fast or as slow as you want. If you enable the legato bypass mode, the legato and attack scripts will be disabled and each note attack starts at your current dynamics value, as if the attack range was zero, and you can play chords. It's called legato bypass for clarity, but uh, my intention for this was to be the sketch mode so you can preview chords without having to record each note with a different instrument first, because that's really slow and tedious. I wouldn't recommend playing chords uh, with a single instrument for your final production because you'll get the same pitch, breath and attack variations applied to both notes. By default this is mapped to the sustain pedal CC64, but you can right click it to remap it to any control you want. So you can hear that if we play chords on a single instrument, the blend is almost synth-like and the vibrato pattern is perfectly in sync for all the notes. And that's why I recommend using this option just for sketching out the chords. Uh, back to the legato function, the script dips the loudness during the transition and this is defaulted to runs or trills, as they are the fastest transition you're gonna play. So sometimes different note velocities and different legato speeds will work, but most of the time you'll have to inflect the notes yourself. And that's the great part. You can now play anything you want exactly the way you want it, in real time. And because of all the millisecond level accuracy, whatever you're playing is going to be your performance and it's always going to sound authentic. Now let's talk about the sound. 
Infinite Woodwinds was recorded dry and sampled chromatically. Just like Infinite Brass, all the woods are non-linear, meaning there are subtle scripted pitch, volume, and tonal variations every time you play a note. It isn't obvious, it works on a subconscious level, so playing never really feels like you're machine gunning. There are no staccato overlays, each instrument is always a single voice. All the layers are playing, but you will always perceive them as a single voice, since the layers are perfectly in phase. As with brass, no clams were recorded, but because it's so responsive, you can intentionally do all the clams yourself. And just like in real performance, sometimes they'll happen to you unintentionally. You know, happy little accidents. Pitch bend can go up and down by three semitones, and it's fantastic for bends. You're gonna wanna be very good friends with it, especially if you're gonna be playing jazz, big band, or pop stuff. Just like Infinite Brass, Infinite Woodwinds uses convolution and over 1800 bespoke impulse responses to generate the space in real time. As you play and as random changes happen to the attacks, pitch, and bright fluctuation, you always get a 100% correct room response to it. So incorrect recorded ambience, missing ambience on crossfade, incorrect releases, especially during vibrato, all of that is now gone forever. The mic setup is the same. There are three mic sets for each position in each space. If you click this icon right here, you can route the ambient mics to a different output. This is great for surround mixing or if you just want more control. Ambient mics are the only ones that can be routed as we're working with impulse responses and not actual recorded mic positions here, so this is a limitation inside contact. You can change the room by clicking on this menu here and choosing a different one. Now the IRs are loaded in the background and you're pretty much good to go. This can take a second or two if you're doing it to multiple instruments simultaneously and you can do that by making use of the space controller, which is the tiny icon of this space menu. And if you right click it, you can assign it to any controller you like. By default, it's always assigned to CC30. So it's very easy to swap spaces with uh, expression maps, a controller, you know, just drawing in MIDI. The rooms are the same ones like an in infinite brass. and the second menu changes the position. Just be careful not to have multiple instruments playing in the same position or you're likely to get some phasing. The offstage and soloist positions are shared with infinite brass, so take that into account when using these. You can enable mixed mic over here, which disables a triple convolution setup and it switches to a single unit mode. Here you can choose from five pre-mixed IRs and you can see the actual values used in a grayed out mixer. Now this option reduces CPU usage by around 40%. It's great if you're working on a laptop or an older machine, and since it's mapped to the same controller for all instruments, you can very easily switch it on or off, and you can work with a mixed mic and then switch back to three mics in order to render. Key noises were done separately and this knob allows you to control the volume of key noises. On the right side is the Articulate tab and you'll find playable vibrato, flutter, growl, volume and dynamic range controls here. Vibrato depth and uh, rate are non-linear, they change every few moments by small amounts so that they feel organic and you can play vibrato with multiple instruments with the same rate and get close results but never a perfectly overlapping pattern. Okay, here's the flutter tongue. And the growl.
volume reduces the overall volume of the instruments, commonly mapped to CC11. And the dynamic range reduces the volume dip caused by the dynamic slider, which lets you play uh, pianissimo samples at the same volume as fortissimo. Humanize will enable real-time humanization. This offsets the note start times and the note velocities by the set amount. While this represents the offset in time in milliseconds, the maximum note velocity offset is actually one-fifth of this value. This can help speed up your workflow if you're playing in multiple instruments at the same time and or copy and pasting MIDI, saving you from having to go into each MIDI clip and a blank humanization inside your DW every time you copy it. Keep in mind that this randomizes timings and velocity on every new note, so if you want full control, your best bet is, as always, to perform each instrument individually. The attack accuracy control is here to help you with the ensemble sound. It's set to lower values in non-linear instruments by default, as that simulates these instruments being a bit less accurate pitch-wise. The tuning is corrected in a period between a half a second and one second, so in an ensemble it sounds like the other instruments are correcting themselves and tuning to the leader in real time. The zone menu allows you to enable neighboring round robin and initiate transpose trick with a single click. The transpose options will transpose the instrument by the specified value and transpose the input by the opposite amount, so the pitch is always the same. But you get access to samples from a different note, letting you load up to five instances of the same patch and avoid phasing as long as you also change the instrument position. So yeah, 15 flutes, why not? Five country bass clarinets and five country bassoons. Yeah, sure, that sounds lovely. Let's check it out. Okay, that's pretty much all the tech talk. Well, like Infinite Brass, it's all very simple. You use note velocity for attacks, CC1 determines sustained loudness, add vibrato, flutter, growl when necessary. Uh, I'll now play through each instrument individually, and in the interest of saving time, I'll just use the Mozart TM. If you want to check out other rooms, go to the website, and next to each demo, you'll find a link which, which will take you to a dedicated web page where you can listen to the demo rendered in each room, and even more important, you can download MIDI. Uh, check out a Rite of Spring one. That's that was a, that's a pretty good one. I mean, that's how do you even write stuff like that? Anyway.
All right, that would be 2.0. Now I'm very happy with how this update turned out. It started out pretty small. The initial idea was to just implement the new spaces and rework the flutes, but as development progressed, I grew increasingly unhappy with the state of some of the instruments compared to Infinite Brass 1.4. And at one point I just decided, screw it, let's redo the whole thing. Speaking of Infinite Brass, it was also just updated. Update 1.5 includes uh, room improvements, legato improvements, trumpets were improved even further. It also adds three Simbasi to the lineup, that's right, even more free stuff, and a couple of other things. Now, if you own any of the two, you're eligible for a cross grade. There's also the Infinite Win Ensemble bundle, which lets you get Infinite Brass and Infinite One Wins together with a discount. You can check the website for both cross grading and the bundle. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below or send me a message via the website and I'll reply as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and bye.